I'm dealing with this problem once and for all. Are you supersizing your business once and for all? Our idiom, our expression, Sharon Horn from here with Supersize Your Business for today is once and for all. Now, I got to thinking about this expression. It's been around since the 1300s. It's got tons of references in different languages, appeared in English in about 1814, and even Dickens used it in Great Expectations in 1861. So, and then since then, it's been used a ton of times. Now, it means, of course, finally and completely uh, to uh, deal with something this one final time. So take care of it and you never have to think about it or deal with it again. I got to thinking about my life and thinking about my businesses and try to think of how many things I've ever done or said once and for all. And I'm at a loss to come up with some. I, I thought I got married once and for all, but then I got divorced. Therefore, maybe I'll get married again. Maybe I won't. But I don't want to ever get divorced again. Never wanted to get divorced in the first place. So to me, Marriage was a once and for all, but I don't know that that's it. A once, a finally and completely for all time. I think that life is crazy and changing all the time, so it's really difficult for us to predict if something is going to be once and for all. Now, I will say, I think we can commit to the things that we believe in, our choices, our our lines in the sand, and determine those once and for all. And we have core values that, that we hold near and dear to our heart, each and every one of us. They're slightly different for us, but... We usually develop those when we're young and we stand by them for the, the entirety of our life. I'll give you a couple of examples. I believe in continuous improvement, lifelong learning and growth. I've believed in that since I was a little kid. I've always been curious and wanted to know more and wanted to learn more and, and find ways to, to use that knowledge. I don't foresee, unless I have a brain injury or have a sudden cardiac arrest and die, that I will stop wanting to always be learning and growing and continually improving and being a better version of myself. Um, so that would be a personal example. Uh, but there's almost everything changes, right? Things change all the time. Our environment changes all the time. Our lives change all the time if we choose to have them change. We can also choose to keep them the same. The same. Maybe consistency and uh, things like that are a core value of yours. So this led me down a trail researching this particular idiom and expression led me down a trail of ethics and basically decision making and choices and it, it came up with I found a list of the seven business ethics which I thought was super interesting so I'll share that and then what are some possible business ethics that we can make decisions on for the most part for our business and growing and supersizing our business and we can make them once for, and for all and they're probably not going to change unless technology changes or the environment changes or things outside of us change to the point where we need to make a different choice or decision with respect to them so what are these seven business ethics this is a pretty good list politics without principles was the first one on the list which i thought was pretty good because we can just blink our eyes and we see examples of this in the world today wealth without work knowledge without character, pleasure without conscience, science without humanity, commerce without morality, and worship without sacrifice. So you can ask yourself, where do I stand on each of these big things? Politics, wealth, knowledge, pleasure, science, commerce, and worship. Where, where do I personally stand on those? And you draw your line in the sand, and chances are those are attached to your core values, and you're probably not gonna change. If you believe that wealth without work is bad that we need to work to create wealth and to create the things that we have in our life that's probably going to be something and you have the same work ethic throughout your entire life it's a choice it's a decision that we make uh, so what type of business decisions do i contend we can make that we can carry through all our businesses and i've looked back on all the different businesses i've been involved in and there have been many dozens and dozens uh i would say that my core beliefs on these has stayed pretty consistent. So what are some of these things that we can make decisions on and carry with us as we're building and supersizing our business? Uh, data protection. How do we protect information? Uh, customer prioritization. How do you place customers in terms of where they land when you're making choices and decisions for your business? Uh, workplace diversity. My, my opinion on workplace diversity has not ever changed from the time I was in high school to college to all of the jobs in corporate America I've been through, plus my own businesses. Whistleblower protection. I gotta 
admit I very seldom have ever even thought about that, but that would be one that I, I believe that whistleblowers personally should be protected. And um, that has carried out probably through my entire life and career. Um, corporate transparency. How open are you going to be as you supersize your business with things and people and places outside of you, even within you, because that's something we have to decide as well. Uh, community outreach. How involved are you in your community, the communities that you're in? Uh, another one's environmental awareness. How aware are you of the impact your organization as you're building and supersizing your business has on the environment? Environment's a biggie right now. And then employee compensation is one that we have a core value and philosophy on and we decide that and we carry that through as we build and grow and supersize our business. I'm sure there's more. That was just a quick list that I, I came up with. So those are some examples of we can decide our core values, our principles, our vision for our business once and for all. Those big things that drive our business, we can pick those ahead of time to create the business that we want. We'll things change and how we get them and how we achieve them change over time? Absolutely, probably almost every single day. So if we think we're gonna deal with the majority of things that happen in supersizing and growing our business once and for all, I think we're, we're deluding ourselves. We have to realize that change is inevitable. It's an automatic part of the process. So we actually wanna come up with our own change handling, change management process. If you don't have one of those, we could talk about that another day. Let me know if you'd like to. Otherwise, have an awesome day. I think this is a fun idiom. I don't know that I've used it very much, but I certainly understand it. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we could clean our houses once and for all, if we could brush our teeth and it lasted forever. But the nature of life and humanity doesn't really support that. So we need to do what really exists and interact with the world as it is, not as we fantasize or wish it might be. All right, any questions, hit me up. Share in the comments below your experience with Once and For All. I would love to know if you have certain things in your life that you have done once and for all. I guess I decided I was never gonna be a smoker once and for all, and it's never even crossed my mind. Things like that. All right, have a great day. I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it to supersize and grow your business? Have a great day.